hey, guess what? All this time that you spent learning HTML and CSS and JavaScript and, and React or whatever front end framework you've been working on, all of that, you don't need it. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that it was a waste of time or that you never should have learned it or anything like that, okay? Before I start getting all the hate in the comment section, <laughs> that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is if you're a person who maybe you don't like the front end, it's very difficult for you to, to learn, but maybe the JavaScript portion was something that you really resonated with, but maybe the React side wasn't that big of a deal, but you don't like the front end. You don't like creating things that people interact with visually, but you like writing code. Well, I have a solution for you. Today, I wanna to share with you five different roles that you don't need to use any of that. Well, maybe JavaScript, but you don't need to use any of those things that we just talked about. Hey, Junior Devs, Dev Mentor Dave here, helping you bridge the gap from learning to code to launching a successful career. And part of launching a successful career is really knowing what you're good at and what you enjoy doing. And if that's not front-end work, well, there's other things that you can do as a developer. Now, of course, the most obvious one is you can just be a back-end developer. So you could pick up another language like PHP, Java, C Sharp, Go, Python, or even JavaScript, and you can use that to write back-end code. Now, I know sometimes back-end code gets mixed in with front-end code and you have to write HTML and things like that. I'm not saying that'll never happen, but there are lots of jobs out there where back-end developers don't ever touch front end code. In fact, they write the code that does a lot of the interactions with the database, that does a lot of data manipulation. All that stuff can be done without ever messing with anything on the front end. So you can just be a back end developer. And honestly, sometimes back end developers get paid more than front end developers. The second role you could do is DevOps engineer. A DevOps engineer is somebody who interacts with infrastructure for development. So they're going to manage things like your repositories. They're going to make sure that those are connected to your, your staging servers or your development servers. They're going to make sure that those servers are up and running. They're going to handle things like Docker, Kubernetes, uh, all kinds of things that are kind of behind the scenes that support the development efforts, but are not writing front end code. Hey, thanks for letting me be a part of your developer journey. We're in the process of building a community where junior developers can grow their skills and take that next step in their career. So if you're finding this content helpful, would you help me get this message out to more people by clicking the like button? And if you're not subscribed, click the subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified the next time I upload a video or the next time I go live, which is every Saturday at 10 a.m. Central United States time. Also, don't forget you can take your involvement with the Dev Mentor Dave community to the next level by joining our Discord server via the link in the description. Thanks again for your help and I'll let you get back to the video. Third role you could take is database administrator. A DBA pretty much works just with databases. Now, sometimes they'll work with back end coding languages as well, but they're mostly there to just manage the database. And that doesn't sound like a very difficult job, but there are some massive databases out there that need to be managed, that pe need people making sure that the, the hardware is working well, that the software is working well, that there's not queries that are causing a lot of problems with locking up the databases so that other queries can use them. There's, there's a lot that goes into being a database administrator. And the best part is, you don't have to write any front end code. The fourth role that you could take is a data scientist. Now this might take a little bit more learning from statistics and things like that, but you can use program languages like Python or R to interact with large data to be able to figure out what businesses wanna know. Data scientists use code and predictive models to analyze data to be able to give relevant information to decision makers in a company. And they don't have to use front end code. In fact, oftentimes data scientists use programs like Power BI or Tableau or something else to be able to get the information that they need from the databases, from the data warehouses, data lakes, and they use that to visualize the information. And last but not least, if you don't wanna write front end code, you could always become a machine learning or an AI developer. Of course, this is cutting edge technology, so maybe that might be a little bit further down the road in your career if you're just starting out, but hey, there's always something to shoot for, right? So even though the focus of a lot of boot camps and a lot of training material is mostly on HTML, CSS, 
JavaScript, React, and other front-end JavaScript frameworks, really you don't have to have any of that to be a successful and well-paid engineer. So if you're having a hard time learning the front end, but you still like writing code, you might check out some of these other roles. You might check out some of these other languages and some of these other options for learning. There's lots of great tools out there right here on YouTube, um, all over the internet. There's great places to learn all these different roles. So if it sounds like something that you're interested, I highly recommend ditch the front end and check out one of these. Hey, I hope this video has been a help to you on your development journey. If it has, if you click the like button, I'd really appreciate it. Just helps YouTube know, hey, people are interested in this type of content. And if you're not subscribed, click the subscribe button and the bell icon. You'll be notified the next time I upload a video like this or the next time I go live, which right now is every Saturday at 10 a.m. Central United States time. Thanks for spending time with me today and I'll see you on the next one.